That was a goal never won. Sorry for when their spawn dropped. That was today. It's October 12th, 2021. And today, we're going to forecast the coldest temperature you should experience this winter in your area. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather related content. Make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to turn on post no notifications if you want to see even more weather related content. So let's begin by taking a look at the tip, the coldest temperature you typically see during the winter based off of pretty much averages between 1981 and 2014 and of course as you head further northward into the midwest we do see that the coldest temperature does range right around the negative 30 to 4 to negative 40 degree range um, and just south of that of course it gets a little warmer um, down to negative 20 and negative 10s however my forecast is quite a bit different compared to this it isn't um, extensively different but I'm forecast but my forecast is certainly different based off the patterns we're gonna experience this winter which I'll elaborate more on in this video so the first thing we need to take a look at is of course the Enzo outlook which gives us a good representation of what's to come for this winter and you see that over the next several months which includes the months of November December and January the most likely scenario is that we will be in a La Nina so the probability is up for that pattern to occur during around that time frame during the winter time frame and what this means is that we're more likely to see jet stream dips as a result of a La Nina however you see later during the winter it does sort of become the chance of a neutral in a La Nina phase does sort of even out closer to February and into March where in fact in March there's more likely of a shot of a neutral phase however majority of the winter we're more likely to experience a La Nina so for this forecast I'm pretty much gonna um, use the a La Nina forecast as the basis for um, the my the my forecasted coldest temperature forecast for this year throughout the United States so you look at what a La Nina typically brings um, into the um, throughout the United States um, you see that the polar jet stream does dip further southward and this brings a colder air from the Canadian region further southward and it creates just cold conditions that are much colder than average just especially in the northern midwest states where the cold air is emphasized in that region and we it is also typically colder right around the pacific northwest as a result of a pacific jet moving through the region which brings a lot of troughs into the pacific northwest and of course when there's a lot of clouds in the sky that that pretty much blocks a lot of short ray radiation from the sun to to pretty much get absorbed by the surface and warm up the temperature so as a result it's typically also colder in the pacific northwest west and i'd say for the most part throughout the great lakes as well as the northeast it's typically colder than average because we typically see more jet stream dips more pronounced jet stream dips than other patterns such as an el nino so i'd say for the most part during uh la nina most of the northern united states is colder than average but it's a stark contrast if you take a look further southward where it's typically a lot warmer and drier than average throughout the southern united states during the la nina and this is primarily due to the fact that no subtropical jet moves through the area so it's simply a lot warmer and drier so of course this pattern will make a pretty big impact in the coldest temperature you'll experience in your area throughout the united states so it could we could potentially see temperatures colder than what you than than the typical average coldest temperature you experience in your area thanks to a la nina and a pretty big variable um polar jet stream moving southward take a look at the average temperatures during the la nina compared to the long-term average you see that it's simply of course a lot colder in the northern united states with the emphasis being more in the northern midwest as well as the pacific northwest where it's much quarter than average typically and of course this could make a big difference in terms of the course temperature you experience for that winter as more likely than not you're you're to experience quarter than uh a uh, coldest temperature that's much colder than the typical average you see during the winter so you might need to prepare for negative 50 degree readings in some areas in the midwest as i certainly wouldn't rule out 
uh, temperature that cold in the area and um, further southward as well you're more likely to see colder than average temperatures the only areas where you might miss out on the temperatures being colder than average is pretty much the southern United States and while the southwestern portion of California is typically colder than average during the La Nina there's also, we also need to take a look at another factor that could play a big role in the temperature, which I'll get to in just a sec, but for the most part, the northern United States should experience a cold temperature that's colder than the typical average for the 2021 and 2022 winter season. Now, taking a look at the average snowfall patterns during the La Nina, this also plays a role in the temperature. You might be wondering why. Well, it's because when there's more snow on the ground, we typically see more of that short wave radiation from the sun get absorbed by the snow because of course when snow or ice melts it takes up heat from the from the surrounding air around it and as it does so it cools down the temperature overall when the ice is melting into um, a liquid or water in this case so when there's a lot of snow on the ground we're more likely to see that snow absorb a lot of that heat energy and that should cool down the area for a lot of the northern United States thanks to the increased amount of snowfall during La Nina and the amount of snowfall on the ground will play a big role in the temperatures you should experience throughout the northern United States as we're more likely to see the coldest temperature be much colder than what you typically see in the northern United States and thanks in part due to more snowfall on the ground. Um, now next, take, next let's take a look at the sea surface temperature anomaly which is another um, very big factor when it comes to measuring the temperature for this winter you see that let's first take a look at the western atlantic and you see that the sea surface temperatures are much warmer than average and this extends to the northeast as well where we're seeing the very dark reds which represent temperatures that are much warmer than average and that and if this were to continue into winter that could raise up the temperature for the, the average temperature for the most part along the coast thanks to the thanks to the um, above average sea surface temperatures. So we might not see a coldest temperature um, as cold as it could be, but I don't think it's gonna be enough to completely disregard the fact that we're gonna be in a La Nina and we're gonna see more jet sh pronounced jet stream dips. I'll bring cold air. So, so although the sea surface temperatures might be warmer than average um, just off the Northeast coast, I do think that the La Nina will win out and will overall still see a cold and average winter for the Northeast. And another thing I want to point out is that the late the great lakes have sea have water temperatures that are warmer than average and that's huge because if this continues until winter the lakes are then like le less likely to freeze and that means lake effect snow is far more imminent and when there's more snow of course it's typically a lot colder in the area and in surrounding areas because the snow of course absorbs a lot of short wave radiation so if we were to see more lake effect snow that would definitely bring down the temperatures throughout the great lakes region and we're more likely to see the coldest temperature be a lot colder than the typical average so i'd say this will con definitely contribute to a very cold temperature um for this winter that's much colder than the typical average now taking a look at the west coast now you see that just off the coast of california the sea surface temperatures are cooler than average and while that might definitely cool down temperatures along the coast we also need to keep in mind of a couple of things um for one thing is that this cooler than average sea surface temperature will contribute to the ongoing drought in california and that should make the conditions less hostile for any sort of trough to develop or a lot of clouds to develop so as a result it might be warmer overall on the west coast and also the um and also it should be just a lot um um i don't think it's going to be enough to offset the fact that we're going to be in la nina so i'd still expect warmer than average conditions um throughout california overall it might be different in the northwest pacific because la nina of course brings a lot of chops to cool down the which will cool down the atmosphere right around that area but um um, although there's a drought, but for California, I still expect to be warmer and drier than average. Now, take a look at the drought monitor. You'll see exactly why, where because the West Coast is still deep 
under a drought at this point and it should be continue all the way into the winter time and it should allow for warmer than average temperatures overall throughout um, Southern California for the most part. While I do expect it to go away in the Pacific Northwest, I still expect the Southwest to uh, experience warmer than average conditions because a lot of Nina typically doesn't change the conditions much along the Southwestern United States as it's typically still a lot drier than average during a La Nina. So I don't expect conditions to change much in the Southwest um united states but i do eventually expect it to change um in the pacific northwest once we see more troughs moving through so that's another thing we certainly need to keep in mind when making a forecast of the cold temperature you should experience this winter now taking a look at another factor is the arctic oscillation because if we're in negative arctic oscillation that typically brings a lot cooler than average conditions throughout the united states and right now we're in a negative um it's going to be difficult to forecast long term when we'll be in a positive and negative arctic oscillation phase and it's even more so difficult to predict how bad the negative arctic oscillation will be or um how much of a how negative it will be overall but um i do expect it to rebound back to a positive phase for the early winter time but during the heart of winter there is that possibility that the negative arts constellation will be um will be during the heart of winter so that certainly should make the cold temperature a lot colder than the typical average you see um during a winter um taking a look at what a negative and positive arts constellation does you see that during uh uh um, during a negative or uh, positive arctic oscillation, the westerly winds are a lot stronger, but during a negative, the westerly winds are a lot weaker. So we see that cold air dip further southward into the United States as shown in these two maps right here. Now, here's my official forecast regarding the cold temperature you should experience for winter 2021 and 2022. For the extreme northern portions of the Midwest, I'm expecting the core temperature to be right around negative 30 and lower, which is very close to Fargo, which is extremely cold temperatures. Please take precaution when going outside because that certainly could get you sick going out there. But make sure, but I expect the cause temperature for this winter would be right around negative 30. I expect it to be around negative 20 to negative 30, which includes cities like Minneapolis and and including the state of Wyoming. Um, I expect you guys to um, experience a cause temperature as close to negative 20. That's close right around the negative 20s, pretty much. Um, just south of that, which includes cities like Detroit, Chicago, Des Moines, Omaha and denver colorado i think the core temperature should be right around the negative teens which is more than average for a lot of you guys um and it's as a result of la nina gonna bring more jet stream dips and just bring the temperature down overall throughout the midwest just south of that which includes cities of boston albany new york city and um pittsburgh and even extending to indianapolis albuquerque new mexico and extending further westward throughout nevada i'm expecting the temperature the cold scepter this winter to be right around zero to negative 10 degrees which is colder than average for most of you guys outside of maybe the southern states such as new mexico um but for the most part, it's gonna the cold temperature should be colder than what you typically expect. So make sure to prepare for just more cold temperatures more often throughout the northern United States and just south of that, which includes cities such as Philadelphia, Washington D.C., Oklahoma City, and even more cities. I'm expecting temperatures to be hovering right around zero to ten degrees at its coldest. Um, as I as that certainly could um could be um very cold for a lot of you guys since you're typically some of you are typically not used to temperatures being that cold um but i do expect it to be a little bit colder thanks to la nina just south that which includes cities like atlanta and um even further westward i'm expecting temperatures uh they'll be the coldest um right around the 10 to 20 degree range of south of that 20 to 32 degrees which includes the panhandle of florida jacksonville 
where the I think the cold temperatures should hover around 20s. New Orleans, it should be around that range. Dallas, which is warmer than what you typically expect because Dallas typically brings experiences the coolest temperatures right around the teens. But I think this time around, it will be a little bit warmer where the cold temperatures should be mainly around 20s. Thanks to a La Nina typically bringing warmer than average conditions throughout the United States and just south of that which includes cities like Phoenix, Los Angeles, and Corpus Christi, as well as Orlando and West Palm Beach, Florida. I'm expecting the temperatures to be right, the cold temperatures to be right around 32 to 50 degrees for the most part. Typically, it doesn't get very cold in anyways in those areas. But yeah, guys, this is my winter 2022 coldest temperature forecast. If you want even more in depth um, um, answer regarding the cold temperature you should experience, for this winter make sure to comment down below your location i'll make and i'll make sure to answer that in um the comment section below but i thank you guys for watching i'll uh, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather related content make sure to like if you like this video make sure to turn on post post notifications if you want to see even more weather related content i hope you guys have a good day